Hello and welcome to the Adobe Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Adobe. My name is Terry White, worldwide design and photography evangelist, and it's my pleasure to stream to you live here on Twitch uh, on the Adobe channel for the next couple of hours. We're going to be talking about a topic that comes up now more often than it used to, and that is how to become a contributor to Adobe Stock, how to sell your images, how to sell your designs, how to sell your vector art, how to sell your videos on the ever-growing Adobe Stock platform. Uh, so if you want to be a contributor, if you create stuff, then this is probably for you. If you create stuff and you want to sell your stuff, <laughs> this is probably for you. Uh, there's lots of questions. There's lots of things that come up anytime I mention the word Adobe Stock. Uh, how much can I make? Uh, is it really worth it? Uh, what kind of things do you accept? Uh, is it is it moderated? Yeah, all of the above. So we're going to cover all of those things. I got two hours to talk about this topic. So uh, that's the longest I think I've ever had to talk about Adobe Stock. I think the most I've ever had in the past was an hour. So we're going to get through it all. We have a ton to get through. Not not just talking about it, but I'm going to show you a live example. I'm going to show you. Uh, uploading something to stock on my own account and walk you through the whole process. Also, if you're a photographer and you're a Lightroom user, there's a new and the latest version of Lightroom and the latest version of Adobe Bridge. There's the ability to upload directly from those applications. You can upload from a web browser. You can upload via FTP. We're going to cover all that as well. I'm going to talk about what format you need. Um, minimum requirements, so forth and so on. So it's a lot to go over. Um, and luckily I get to do it in two hour in a two hour time slot where I can get in depth with it. So this is dedicated, this whole thing's dedicated to Adobe Stock. And I'm gonna start off by doing something I don't normally do in any of my streams. Like normally when I'm doing a stream, I just jump in and start doing uh, the work or, or doing a demo. But this time we're actually gonna do some slides first. But before we do that, there are some people that will be watching this later. There'll be people watching this on um, on Twitch, on the Adobe channel as a video on demand. And there'll be people watching it. I, I usually post these on my own YouTube channel. Uh, people watching it there. And if you are watching this as a video on demand or a replay on some platform, um, then note that this was live. So therefore, you'll see me look over here. Not making eye contact with you. I'm looking right here because I'm looking at my uh, my display for chat. So there are people live right now in the chat, and as they ask questions or make comments, uh, I'll do my best to catch them and address them as they go by. Uh, so with that said, you'll you'll see me pause. You'll see me stop. You'll see me answer questions from the live audience. So this is more of a live thing that I'm doing as a courtesy as a replay. It wasn't designed to be a YouTube video from scratch. Uh, so, with that said, uh, we'll give some shout outs. Uh, good morning, Victoria. Good morning, Star Crunch. Good morning, uh, Winter07. Good morning, John. Good morning. Uh, who else did I see earlier? Uh, I can't remember now. <laughs> good morning, Streamshed. Good morning, Therida. Uh, good morning, everyone that I didn't say good morning to and call out or give a shout out directly to, but good morning, Kiefer. And with all that said, um, those are my shoutouts for this morning. And again, we'll jump right in now and get to work. So again, as they ask questions, uh, I'll try to address them. Or in this case, I may tell you on this particular stream, I'm not going to answer it right now because it's coming up. Because uh, a lot of people, every time I mention Adobe Stock, jump up and start asking all the questions that I'm going to cover anyway. Um, we have a couple of moderators in, Victoria's in, she's a, she's a stock contributor as well, so she can answer questions directly in the chat um, that I may miss. And with that said, I think that's it. I think it's probably time to jump into the slide deck and let me uh, set the stage for what we're going to talk about today. And let me get the slide going there. And it is going. Good, good, good. All right, let me switch over to the screen. All right, cool. Um, so, new opportunities with Adobe Stock. And this is really about how to sell your content on Adobe Stock. Um, I'm going to set the stage a little bit by talking about what Adobe Stock is, how it's currently being used, how stock is used in general. Then we'll talk about some specifics to Adobe Stock. We'll talk about some specifics to becoming a contributor. And then we'll dive in and actually show you how to do it. 
So uh, with that said, uh, it's a huge market opportunity. This is why Adobe got into this business to begin with a couple years back. We acquired a company called Fatolia. And if you were already, one of the questions that usually comes up, and most people know this by now, but if you were already a Fatolia contributor or you had stuff on Fatolia already, all your Fatolia content became Adobe stock content. So you don't have to re-upload, you don't have to redo anything if you were already a Fatolia contributor before Adobe acquired Fatolia. Um, it's been about a year or two, year and a half of transition. So when we first acquired them, you still did everything through Fatolia. You did everything through the Fatolia website. But now, as of this year, um, about a month ago, uh, we announced, we launched a month, a couple weeks, launched a, a new portal um, at stock.adobe.com. There's a new sell tab now where you can do the whole process on Adobe Stock. You don't have to go to the Fatolia site anymore. As a matter of fact, you don't go to the Fatolia site anymore to create an account. The only people that would go to the old site are the people that already had an account. So it's now from here on out, uh, you do it all from the Adobe side. Uh, so with that said, uh, these are just some examples of just, you, you, you see stock content everywhere, every day. You just don't think about it. Um, as a photographer, I would love it if companies would call me up every day and say, hey, we need you to fly to Alaska and shoot, uh, you know, shoot a, a whale in the, in the ocean. But the reality is, the cost that it would take for a company to send a photographer out to go shoot something specific versus just finding that, that thing that they want on stock would be just, it's not cost effective to do it. That's why stock exists in the first place. Now, of course there will be instances where a company does hire a photographer, videographer, or a graphic designer because they do want something custom. They want something unique. They want something that's only theirs and it, does, it isn't available anywhere else. That's why those jobs exist, for people to go out and shoot that kind of content. But for everything else, for the day-to-day -day work, for the things that people use on a regular basis in ads, news stories, whatever, it's stock content. It's just easier to go out and find something that a photographer, videographer, or graphic designer already did than to contract someone to do it from scratch every single time. Um, so that's why stock is out there. So you'll see you'll see quotes, or we hear quotes all the time of our creative teams can't keep up, the demand to produce so much content across so many channels on time and budget and all that. Um, when creatives, uh, when when we share creative assets internally and with, and with freelancers, we struggle with version control and all that. And that's we, we're trying to solve that with Creative Cloud libraries. Mobile and web are highest priorities and prototypes and designs. And again, these are all just kind of the pain points we hear. 30% um, of the market marketers create five or more pieces of content per week. So again, those five or more pieces of content a week, nine times out of 10, or 10 times out of 10 actually, they're going to probably have a, a piece of uh, art on them, whether it's a photo, graphic design, or, or illustration, or something, or it's a video. Um, so where are they getting all this content from? 71% uh, of creatives create 10 times the assets today to support these increasing um, channels. So we're creating, we're shooting more, we're doing more as the creatives out there are creating this content. 75% um, of creatives say they're increasingly working across multiple platforms and disciplines. So no longer is a person just doing print or just doing web or just doing video. People are having to do more. And 80% of uh, creatives recognize the need to learn new tools. And, and that's cut off. <laughs> All right, need to fix that. All right, so stock. Beautiful content that people want to be able to use, but don't always have the time or budget to go create from scratch every, every single time. This is where you come in, Adobe Stock. So let's talk about it first from the, um, from the, uh, from the, uh, the person consuming the content's perspective, uh, and Adobe Stock in general. So Adobe Stock right now, 
I remember when we first acquired Fatolia, it was around 35, 40 million pieces. Now it's 60 million high quality uh, photos, videos, and illustrations and graphics. And I would love to, I can't wait to see that number hit 100 million. So we're constantly increasing. Now, where is all this, where is this 60 million pieces of content coming from? You. People like you are submitting content on a daily basis to make that number larger. Not to just help Adobe, but to help themselves, basically to be able to sell that content. 45,000 fresh images added daily from 180,000 contributors in 180 countries. So again, if you want to be one of those 180,000 or want to be 180,001, uh, then you can sign up to be a contributor today. 85% of creatives who buy stock assets use Adobe tools. So that, that's a key point, is that the people consuming all the stock content in the world, 85% of it, of it ends up in an application like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign to complete the project. 90% of stock sellers use Adobe software to prep their content for the market. So that's the flip side of it, meaning as a photographer, if I go out and shoot and I want to sell on stock or, or use the image anywhere, Chances are I'm going to process that image with Lightroom, with Photoshop, with, you know, whatever, with Adobe Tools. Um, product updates for buyers. So uh, one of the things we launched when we introduced the new portal was also new, a new premium content collection. 100,000 images of the world's most renowned, from the world's most renowned photographers. In other words, the best of the best. This is content that has been curated by Adobe Stock curators as the best of Adobe stock. Um, and I would love to someday, in other words, that's my goal, someday have some work in the premium collection. Now, premium collection, of course, sells for a lot more <laughs> and um, yields a lot more for the contributor. So if you make it in there, you've made it. You basically have made it to the Super Bowl of stock. Um, Deeper product integrations, open in and in-app purchase and all that. So one of the things that uh, we've been working with ever since we acquired Fatolia is integrating just the whole stock process into our tools. And so I've shown this many times. I've shown this on my stream many times where I'm in Photoshop and I, I'm going to work with a sample image. And I go to my Creative Cloud library and I go do a search and I find an image and bring it right into the library. That's a... a um, a thing that's unique to the Adobe products is that I can do that in Photoshop, in Illustrator, in Muse, in um, InDesign, in Premiere, in After Effects. I can just find content and not only go to a website and download it and then find it in a folder and bring it in, but it's right there in a Creative Cloud library for me to bring right into the thing I'm working on. Um, so. One of the things we're going to do today, and this is as of a month ago, yeah, so it was a month ago or weeks ago, September 2016, we introduced the new contributor portal. So this is the part where I was talking about where it was no longer, or no longer go to Fatolia to contribute. You go straight to the new contributor portal to upload everything, to sign up, to do everything. And this has been a long time coming. It's one of those things we really wanted to introduce it earlier. <clears throat> but there were some things that we wanted to do to make it even better. So it came out in September instead of earlier like we wanted it. But anyway, um, now, so let's let's flip the, flip the coin a little bit. Initially, the, the goal was to make stock a part of the creation process, meaning stock was in CC libraries. It's, it's something easy. If you do go to the website, you can say open in, you know, InDesign, Illustrator, whatever. Or you could sync it right to a library from the website. So that part was initial, the initial work to get it done to make stock uh, feasible for people that are um, using stock. Now we flip the coin and, or flip the gears or flip the direction so that we're making it easier for contributors to now upload their content um, uh, using Adobe tools. So like I said, with Lightroom now, I can I can submit directly to Adobe Stock from Lightroom. Uh, and a new auto keywording tool that automates generate, automatically generates keywords to build metadata and uh, quickly and easily. So we'll talk about keywords too. That's a big part of it. Okay, so uh, 
this is just some stats of just how much quicker stock is when you're when you're using the content. So seconds versus minutes. Um, this is what it looks like. When, again, we've seen this before, where you can just search for an Adobe stock image right inside of your tools, including your video tools, including up to 4K video. And now the new contributor program. This is why you're all here today. So. <clears throat> what does Adobe accept and how much will you be paid? So that's big questions right off the bat. We accept photos, illustrations, vectors, and videos. Um, you will receive a 33% royalty on each image sold and a 35% royalty on each video sold. Um, so that means if I upload a photo, single photo, and that photo sells for $9.99, which is the price, um, then I would get, well, that's the, that's the non-subscription price. In other words, for a person that just wanted to license an image and they don't have a subscription to Adobe stock, it's $9.99. So therefore I would get $3.33 from that image. Um, now if they had a subscription and they, they got the image as low as $3, then I would only get a dollar or a buck from 99 cents from that image. So it just depends on the price point that the person can purchase it for. Um, now, that doesn't sound like a lot, Terry. That sounds like, you know, pennies. And it is. It's, it's not a lot if you only sold one image. But this is not a, and this is some, one of the things I wanted to cover right, right up front, but I didn't get a chance to, so let's do it now. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. This is not a make-a-million-dollars-overnight scheme. This is not a, I can quit my job tomorrow and just do stock scheme. This is not a, if I upload 10 things or 100 things, I don't have to ever upload anything again and I'll just make money from now on. It's none of those things. In other words, this will require time and effort and work if you want to be successful at it. So if you if that turns you off, if you say, oh, I thought this was going to be easy and I thought I would just be able to upload, you know, 15 things and be done and just make money for the rest of my life and make enough money to retire on and all that, then you can probably stop watching now because this is not for you. This is for people that recognize that like anything, to be good at it, it requires effort. If you want to be a good photographer, you don't buy a camera and then open your, you know, flip your sign over, open for business, and you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars the next day in photography. Anyone that's a photographer knows it never works that way. Anybody that's done anything successfully knows that even if you're a musician, a, a sports star, or whatever, you had to practice. You had years of getting good at it before you got that big payoff. So Adobe stock is the same way. Um, are there people making a living on Adobe stock or selling stock in general? Absolutely. There are people making six-figure incomes. And that's all they do. It's just stock. They wake up every day and treat stock like it's their job because it is their job. Um, in those cases, those are people that are dedicated to it and they use it and do it. And they wake up every day and treat it like a job. And they, they set up shoots. Uh, just for stock, whether it's images or video, and or they wake up and do graphic design all day long just to contribute to stock because they know that it's a long-term and a volume game. The more you contribute, potentially the more you can make. So if you're selling one image a day, and let's say you're you're getting it for the, uh, you know, you're getting top dollar, you're getting the $3.33 for one image a day, you know, you're not even going to buy Starbucks. And, and by the way, that would be you selling that one image every day at that price. That may not even happen because if your image is not that good, it may never sell. You also have to remember, too, even today you're competing against 60 million other pieces of content. So you've got to keep it fresh. You've got to keep uploading all the time if you want to really be successful at this. So there are people that will... Uh, they're all, sp all, all spectrums. People that just want to dabble in this, make a few bucks, upload a, you know, a few hundred things and be done with it, and hopefully they're great and you'll make a few bucks. There are people that say, hey, if I could just pay the rent on my studio from Adobe Stock, 
that work? So they figure out how many hundreds or thousands of images or content they need to upload, how much it would need to sell on average, and they do it. They go for it, and they make that amount of money each month. Then there are people that literally do want to make this their job, and they quit everything they're doing and focus all their attention on this, or they don't quit right away, but they focus all their attention on this, and they treat it like a job every day and wake up. Because it's their passion. They go out and shoot and create content every single day and upload it to stock. And those are the people that are the best at it. Those are the people that make the most money because they're putting the most effort into it. So that's it. Off my soapbox for how much can you potentially make. And that it will depend on you. Um, so why Adobe stock? Well, you can. first of all, there's no exclusivity. You can contribute to Adobe stock. And you can uh, contribute to other stock photography places you or stock houses. You don't have to just contribute to Adobe Stock. As a matter of fact, if you contribute, if you say, hey, I want to contribute to Adobe Stock, and once I get good at this, go off and contribute the same content to 10 other houses, then you can potentially make 10 times more because you're now selling your content in more places. But one of the reasons I would say at least start with Adobe Stock or maybe, you know, Keep to Adobe Stock for a while before you venture off on other places is because it's so easy to do. And because Adobe is putting all of its effort behind making not only Adobe Stock successful, but therefore making you successful at it. Um, so this is the Lightroom. We're going to see this in, in depth, but this is kind of what the Lightroom interface looks like. So on the left hand side, on the published service, which I'm blocking. Uh, on the published service, you see now there's a new Adobe Stock one if you have the latest version of Lightroom. And you can literally just drag your images into that collection and hit publish and they will upload to your Adobe Stock account. We're going to do all that, but don't, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the slide. Once that content's up, uploaded, then you go to the web page and finish it, meaning um, add your keywords if you need to, put it in a category that it needs to be uh, listed in. And if it's a, it contains a person, then you will go ahead and put in uh, your model release or, or a property release if you need one. Um, well, thank you, Optic Sourcebook. I appreciate that. All right, so let's move on. What kind of things work best or is Adobe Stock looking for? Pictures of animals, architecture, food, drink, industry, lifestyle, people, science, sports, technology, transportation, nature, travel, environment, business, and graphics. And as a contributor, you will get emails. There's a blog you can actually go to, too, uh, where you can see what's trending. Like, what, what's Adobe Stock looking for today versus just in general? And right now, it's business. They're looking for more and more business content. People sitting around a conference table, people interacting in a business meeting, um, business type imagery, imagery or videos. That's what's the current thing that they're looking for right now. Um, but stock content, if it's good, submit it, no matter if it's the current thing they're looking for or not. Adobe Stock offers two types of licenses. This is for people licensing your content. A standard license, which allows the buyer to uh, use the images on media of a variety of uses, such as websites, newsletters, printed, and advertising. And extended licenses. Uh, allows the buyer to use the images to create uh, derivative products intended for resale, such as postcards, posters, calendars. These are sold at a higher price point. So the standard license would be that $9.99 price point, that $9.99 price point. An extended license could be $30. It could be $100. It could be whatever your level is at Adobe Stock where you get to set the price up to a certain amount. So, um, and as you contribute more and get better at it and sell more, you get to be able to, like, they unlock things on your account for you to be able to, like, set your own extended price. Um, do you get a discount for buying Adobe stock? Uh, no, you don't. But you can use your, well, I don't know how that's going to work in the future. In the past, with Vitolia, you could use your sold credits to turn it around to buy stock instead of getting paid. So... I don't know if that'll work the same with Adobe Stock going forward. Uh, here's some tips, stock photography tips. Understand marketing. Understand the market, I should say. Um, 
And this took me a bit to really understand and get. Um, for example, let me go back. You have to remember that a pretty picture is one thing to you. And it's something different for someone buying stock. Meaning someone buying stock is looking for something they can use. They're not just looking for a pretty picture. So, for example, when I shoot portraits in general for myself or for the, for the client, I'm cropping in tight. I'm you know, focused in on a specific thing, their face, their eyes, whatever. But if I was really trying to shoot for stock, then I would shoot wide. I would shoot further. I would maybe put the person in on one side or the other and leave room for copy. Like, for example, in this image we're looking at right now, there's plenty of room at the top of this image to put a marketing message. To, to composite something else onto it, to put a logo onto it, things like that. So you have to really and almost retrain yourself against the general rules of composition when you're composing for just a regular photo versus composing for stock. Because this is golden, what we're looking at right now. If, if they had just cropped it down and focused just on the plants, just on the cacti, then that, that image would be less desirable because there's no room for the marketing person to put their own message, to put their own thing. Uh, model releases. If the content um, has a recognizable face, meaning we can see there's a person there. We can see her face. She would know that's her from her face. Uh, then you need a model release. And uh, you can use your own model release, provided it's got the right verbiage, or you can download a model release directly from the Adobe Stock site. When you sign up at the contributor uh, portal, uh, there's a link to go get model and property releases. Now, um, I've had people ask me all kinds of questions. If I, you know, if she's like lost in the crowd, and, but, and I'm like, can you see her face? Yeah, well, then you need a model release. If she's blah, 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 yes, you need a model release. If I can see who that is, you need a model release. Now, if this was shot and she's running down the stairs and you can't see her face, then you don't need a model release. It's not a recognizable person. That could be anybody. But if the face is visible, then yes, you're going to need a model release. And it would need to be obviously signed by the model. If it's a person under 18 and it needs to be signed by their parents, uh, or parent. Now, here's one that I just learned recently. I've been submitting a stock for a long time and I really didn't understand this particular aspect of the model release. Not only do you need a model release, and they're, they're all, all the rules are listed in that section of, of the contributor portal. Uh, of course, signed by the subject and signed by you, the photographer, but you also need a witness. And most of my model releases did not have a witness signature. So you, you need a third person to sign that release at the time you're doing your, 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 your recognizable photo shoot or recognizable content or video shoot. And yes, you would need, if there were three people running, you need one for each person if their faces are recognizable. So model releases, your image will not be accepted without one signed properly and witnessed by someone that was there or at least witness the signature. Keywording is the number one thing that will make you successful or not. Oh, actually number two. <laughs> number one is having great content. Number two is keywording. Because if I have the best photo in the world and it never comes up in anyone's search, then it'll never make a dime. So having the best photo, best video, best, best graphic design doesn't mean anything if it's not keyworded properly. And keywording is one of the things that people, especially the people that are new, are going to struggle with the most. Because when you're keywording, we're thinking of keywording from the aspect of the person creating the content. Meaning, oh, clock, bell, gear, you know, um, hands, uh, ringer. You know, the, if you start to keyword this image, those would be the kinds of things you would think of. Numerals. Uh, so we, we start dissecting what we see and typing in keywords. That's what we've been trained to do as photographers 
and designers and everything from day one. Because we're look, we're trying to keyword something so we can find it later. If you're trying to keyword this to be sold, then you would also add keywords like timeless, wake up, um, start your day, you know, anything like that. Something that marketing people are searching for because they're, they're not going to ever type in exploded clock view. <laughs> they're not going to type that in. They're not going to say... But if they found this image of an exploded alarm clock view, oh, wow, that's cool. I can use that. But you got to put in the keywords that they're looking for, not the ones you're looking at. So this image is awesome. This is a great stock image. There's plenty of room on the size for copy. It's isolated. There's nothing else distracting in the image. It's, it, it can be used for a lot of different things. But if you don't put the right keywords in it no one will ever find it and therefore it's the best image in the world no one will ever buy it so you have to you have to do that i had a picture of a beer can lying on the street and you cannot spot any logos or marking or something on it else and that it would be a beer can it was rejected by adobe for uh stock for copyright reasons at which point a logo or brand are recognizable or what would be the criteria okay so I, I ran into a similar situation, uh, Wonder 0815. I set up a shoot. As a matter of fact, we're going to upload some, some more content from that shoot I did um, back in 2015. I set up a shoot for stock. It was a business diversity shoot. I had a male and female subject, uh, different uh, racial backgrounds, um, sitting around a conference table, doing all kinds of different poses and everything. I thought, oh, man, it's going to be great. Half of my images were rejected. Nothing to do with the quality, nothing to do with the subject, but it was rejected for that same thing. It's called intellectual property because I had them interacting. I was going to pull one up. I had them interacting with devices, with, in this case, an iPad. And even though the iPad was just laying on the table, like in one of the shots, it was just off and laying off to the side. The reason, it, and it didn't, it didn't show an Apple logo or anything. No logos were recognizable. It wasn't on. No sc splash screen or anything was on. It was off. Black screen laying off to the side. The reason it was rejected is because anyone looking at that picture would know it's an iPad. So in your case with a beer can, I can't tell by not seeing the picture, but if someone would recognize, and it might not have been just the beer can, by the way. It might have been something else you didn't even notice in the picture. Uh, but if, if, if it's the beer can and a company would recognize that as their brand, then therefore it, it would be intellectual property right, intellectual property violations. Um, so you have to think about that also in your content. Um, I did a sports shoot. Obviously, the, the person was wearing Nike gear and other kinds of gear, and the logos were clear. Like you could see the Nike on her shoes, all rejected. And I wasn't even thinking about those <laughs> because I'm thinking of the sports scene in an abandoned warehouse, so forth and so on. But I wasn't thinking about the clothing she was wearing, all Nike branded, clear, visible logos. Now, if you take the time and you go in and remove all that, and you remove the logos, and you remove everything, then there's a chance it could be accepted. As long as it's not a recognizable pattern that Nike, for example, always uses. Uh, or recognizable, you know, even though it didn't say the word Nike, it had the swoosh on it. So the swoosh is, you know, we all know what that is. Uh, so in the case of the iPad, um, there are very few tablets that look like an app, uh, you know, exactly like an iPad with the one button at the bottom, white, you know, bo um, uh, uh, bezel, so forth and so on. We knew it was an iPad, so therefore it got rejected. Some of it I was able to push, get pushed through, resubmit, make my case, but then there were others that I couldn't. Uh, hey, Jan. All right, so content needs. These are the categories of content needed for photography and requirements so i'll just try and move out of your way there for that so on the, on the left hand side at the bottom there for those who can't see that it says celebrities or celebrations concepts couples culture education so just really uh rather than looking at these categories i would say for me 
The content that is sold the most, like my content that sells the most on Adobe Stock, is content of people. Uh, I have tons of, of landscapes and beautiful scenes and all that, but they sell at a fraction of the pace of the, of the content with people in it. So diverse pe diversity sells uh, people. Now, when I say people, it also will make a difference if the person is just standing there, beautiful you know, person, and you take a shot versus a beautiful person or a person, that doesn't have to be beautiful, but a person doing something combing their hair, you know, raking the leaves, whatever, holding a, a prop. Those are going to sell more than just the portrait because those are more useful for things. Uh, if the images come preloaded in an app, can that be used without copyright infringement since it was bought with the app or product? Eunice, usually no, because what you're doing is you're taking images from an app and reselling them. So without permission to resell them, um, probably not. Uh, you would have to really verify whether or not the images in the app can be used in that way. Usually the license states that you can use it royalty free for your own creation. Um, but if you're like taking an image of, <laughs> of Jan says a kitten, taking an image of kitten out of an app and then just uploading the kitten as is, now you're you're technically reselling that that apps content. Um, so I would say probably not. It would just depend on each app and each license. But good question. Uh, content needed for vi videography. So notice that at the very top of the list, and we're going to hopefully get to this maybe today, maybe not, but hopefully today, aerial view, drone view, uh, establishing shots, uh, special effects, green screens, lower thirds, pan and scan, backgrounds, templates, time lapse, motion graphics, Slow motions, single shots. And if you think about the footage types, think about all of those for video. That's the stuff you see on commercials and ads and things. You see a flyover of the city before you see the actual uh, content. Uh, hey, Scott Kelby, what's up, man? Uh, so you, you see that type of video, stock video, before the op as the opening scene of the show or as the opening scene of the ad or whatever. So um, that's the, you know, when it comes to video footage, that's what they're looking for. All right. Uh, vectors. So people always ask me, well, what if I'm not a photographer? What if I'm just a graphic designer or an illustrator? Can I create, can I submit that work? Absolutely. Matter of fact, um, as you might imagine, there are a lot more people that will pick up a camera and snap a picture, but there are a lot fewer people that actually know how to draw something that's good enough to be able to sell. So there will be people that, um, that will be more successful just doing illustrations all day, vector art, than there will be people that just shoot photos all day. So I would say vectors and video is probably the, the lowest number of content in existence on Adobe Stock versus photos. So if you're good at vectors, if you're good at creating illustrations, go for it. <laughs> because chances are, uh, I would spend my time doing that more so than, than trying to shoot photos because everyone is shooting photos. Um, so illustration and graphic design sells well. And Victoria is a good example. She's submitting uh, vector work every day. So here we go. Finally getting to the good part. Ready to, and uh, we had to get all that stuff out of the way first, but ready to contribute to stock. It's really a three-step process. Create an account. using your, You can use your own existing Adobe ID, and I highly recommend you do. Uh, upload content. Um, and start selling. That's it. It's that simple. You do not have to be anything special or approved to be the person that sells. Your content has to be approved, but not the actual person. So you don't have to meet some minimum requirements. You don't have to be a photographer for 10 years. You don't have to be a, a graphic designer with a college degree or anything. Just if you're, if you think you've got good enough content to be sold, then you can just go sign up and start submitting your content today. All right. So um, let me walk you through it really fast. So um, you would go to contributor.stock.adobe.com to get started. You're going to be taken to a page that looks just like this, where you will get to create an Adobe ID or continue using your existing Adobe ID. 
And I just walked through this process uh, the other day, like I opened up a, a private browser window so it wouldn't even see that I was logged in already. And just to create all of these screenshots of how it works. So let's say you have an existing Adobe ID. We're going to just use that example. You sign in. Once you're signed in, it's going to ask you, hey, are you a contributor on Fotolia already? Yes or no. If you are, then you would just sign in with your existing Fotolia account and you're done. If you're not, uh, proceed to the next step. So you just verify these four things. I'm over 18. I will only upload images, vectors, or videos that I have the rights to. Eunice, do you have the rights to sell that stuff? Uh, I will only upload uh, for which I have a, a valid. I will only upload files for which I have a valid model or property release. Now we didn't talk about property releases, but if I'm shooting something where the property itself is the shot, meaning it's not like just a skyline and there's a building off to the side because there's a bunch of buildings, but if the building is the picture, will the owner of that building? say, hey, that's my building. I, I'm, I created the architecture for that. That's me. You can't sell that. So you might need a, a property release if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, different subject. Really enjoy the story. Okay. Thanks, John. All right. So uh, last but not least, I've read the stock contributor uh, guidelines. So you agree to all those things. And then that's it. <laughs> you're ready to start uploading your content. That's how easy it is to get your account set up. Um, now, once you upload your first thing, let's say I upload an image, which I did, then uh, you're going to go ahead and keyword it. You're going to go ahead and put in uh, where you want. And as an interesting thing, I was doing this all as a, uh, again, just to get these screenshots. Notice over here on the left side of, hang on, oh, I can't move my mouse there. But on the left side of this image, in the lower left corner is my, cop, is my uh, watermark. <laughs> You can't upload watermarked images. I just went and grabbed something out of a folder and threw it in there to, to upload something, but that will never get um, that will never get approved because you can't upload with a visible watermark just because it's you. Because nobody wants to buy your image with a visible watermark on it. Um, yeah, that's a big upload button. So uh, it was it cracked me up a couple days later. Your image was declined for, it didn't mean, <laughs> I'm like, what? Huh? Oh, yeah, that was a sample. I wasn't really trying to upload that. But anyway, you upload, you put in your keywords, you fill out the stuff on the right-hand side, which we're going to get to. Um, now, this will, this will happen. Uh, this is the first item ready to be submitted. Uh, yep, okay. Then, this is the part that it's going to ask you to do as a new contributor. Hey, since you're, uh, since you're uploading for the first time, you'll need to submit your ID. So a picture of your driver's license or your ID that you have so that we know it's you. Um, once you do that, uh, you can submit your file. It will go into the queue to be approved. And then you'll get a link at the top that says, hey, you need to fill out some tax forms or at least a form because you are potentially going to be making taxable potentially taxable income. So depending on how much money you actually earn, Adobe will be required to send you a 1099 at the end of, at end of the year each year to, then now we're not going to withhold any taxes, but you will, we have to report your earnings to the government. Um, so you will fill out the appropriate tax form for your um, country. And uh, you'll find the right tax form, which I did. I'm an individual, blah, blah, blah. I did a W-9. You fill out the W-9, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you sign it. You digitally sign it. So you don't, have to, you don't have to print anything or upload anything. You can download a copy when you're done. And then you submit it. And then that's it. Your image is ready to go and upload it and sitting in the queue. And you filled out all your tax forms. And you're good to go. Whew. All right. That's it. No more slides. Now, uh, sound off in the in the comments to let me know going forward. Was were, were the slides helpful? Let me know one way or the other. Like, was that information useful, or would you say no, Terry? Don't do the slides next time. Just jump right into actually submitting, and we'll ask questions along the way. So just let me know. Um, all right. So we can't take it back now. So <laughs> the slides are done. But just let me know if they were useful. Okay, let's talk about um, Lightroom. 
and let's talk about some content I want to upload. And by the way, I want to show you one of those uh, shots that got rejected before. I think it was one of these. This is what I was referring to. Okay, everyone's saying yes, very helpful, very helpful, I think it's useful. Yes, the slides are great, very informational. Okay, cool, thanks. This is one of these those images. Like I said, this is something I shot specifically for a shot or stock. Shot, shot for shot, shot for stock. Um, I purposely made sure we didn't see an Apple logo on the laptop. I either cropped it or cloned it out. But that iPad sitting off to the side, off, no logo. The, the, the person uh, reviewing my file rejected it for that. Because if you look at that and you know what an iPad looks like, you know that's an iPad. And Apple, of course, of all companies, is very protective of their brand. And um, they wouldn't let that one in. So, <laughs> these are the kinds of things for intellectual property you have to look out for. Now, maybe if I would have, you know what, you know, now, if I wanted to go back and fix that and resubmit it, all I'd have to do is two things, or two, two things on that iPad. Remove the home button, just clone it off, and remove the uh, microphone uh, hole at the top. Now it's just a white tablet that doesn't have the unique Apple home button at the bottom of the screen, and then it would be no problem. Because you wouldn't know what tablet that was. And that tablet's not serving a purpose in this shot anyway. It's just decoration. So if I had taken those two things off and resubmitted it, no problem. Um, that, so that's what you would do to fix a intellectual property right thing like this. Now, of course, recognizable face. She knows she's her. <laughs> we can see that that's her. So I needed a model release, which I have. And um, that would be the way to submit that shot. Okay, before we submit some shots from 2015, let's go back and let's go down here. So in the uh, in Lightroom, and here I can probably go find Bridge as well. Let me find it in Bridge for those of you using Bridge. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. For those of you who want to submit things and you're not Lightroom users or you want to submit graphic designs or other things, when you open up Bridge under the window menu, there is a publish panel. In the publish panel, there is where you can set up Adobe Stock. So if I set up Adobe Stock, uh, it's going to walk me through the same process where I need to sign in. And okay, I'm signed in. And then I come back. And now I'm ready to go. That was it. I just need to check my account to make sure I'm signed in. And now I can go ahead and drag stuff into this panel to upload. So if you just want to upload stuff that's not in your Lightroom library, you can use Bridge to do it, or you can just use the website. But um, this would be one of the ways for people to do it as well. Let's go back to Lightroom, which is the way that I will be doing it from here on out. All right, so same thing here. It's a publish um, panel in Lightroom. Um, since mine is already set up, I don't have to do anything but just drag things in. I've gone in and even put in the items that I had previously uploaded from Lightroom so that I would have them all in one spot. So I've contributed over 563 things. Um, some of them are videos, that's why I say things. Uh, to Adobe Stock. And uh, this way I get to keep track of which ones have been submitted. When you, when you um, cr set it up for the first time, this is what it will look like. Uh, so you will go through, you can put a name up there as a description. You don't have to, but you can. And then you will just go through all these steps. And it will just, once you click save, it'll do the same kind of thing that Bridge did. It will, you know, oh, you have an account, you're signed in, you're good to go, and then you're done. Uh, if you have questions, you can always come back here and look for uh, the submission guidelines and things like that, which we're going to go to in just a minute. And now you're ready to go. So if I go here, this collection of 563 things are all the things I've submitted to stock. Now... You'll notice that they're all virtual copies. I'm going to explain that in a second. But before we get to the virtual copies, why do some of them have one star? Notice that one has one star. That one has one star. That one has one star. It's something I did as a way to know which ones were rejected. 
This helps me not only keep track of, to, uh, so I do this collection for a couple of th reasons. One, it lets me know what I've already submitted, so I don't re resubmit it by accident, uh, even though I have done that. Two, more importantly, if it has a one star, I get to see what's being rejected and maybe start to learn from that process of those got rejected. And they'll give you an, an explanation, and I should probably put the explanation in somewhere, but they'll give you an explanation as to what why it got rejected. And then you can kind of learn what you're doing right and wrong, meaning the ones that didn't get rejected um, will know why, or those, you know, those were fine. The ones that got rejected, they gave you a reason, and you can kind of say, okay, I know not to do that from here on out. And it never fails for me. It's like usually the ones that get rejected are my favorite ones. So, for example, let's take this shot from Seattle. One of my favorite shots. Why would that get rejected? And I, I, I can't wait for you to type it in, but it's not a quality issue, not a noise issue, not a low resolution, nothing to do with the quality of the image. Quality of the image is fine. Got rejected for a different reason. All right. While you're thinking about it, let me tell you what the reason was. It got rejected because that's a copyrighted structure. The Space Needle is copyrighted. I don't have a property release for the Space Needle. And I thought, I thought about it even before I went out to shoot it. I thought about it. It's like, ooh, if I go submit that to stock, I wonder if they're going to complain because that's a Space Needle. Because I've had it happen before. If you go shoot the Sydney Opera House, it's a highly copyrighted, copyrighted building. Uh, so you cannot, yep, the building's copyright. You cannot submit the Sydney um, Opera House for the same reason. It's a copyrighted design architecture. Um, so you'd need a property release, and I doubt if they're going to give you one, <laughs> unless they hired you to do it. So anyway, uh, this image got rejected for that reason. It just reminded me. Uh, so all the people that are guessing, you guessed correctly. So someone said, same thing for the Eiffel Tower. Um, that one I might disagree on, because I have an Eiffel Tower shot that got approved, and maybe it just, maybe it just got by. But um, yeah, it could be the Eiffel Tower could be the same thing, depending. Uh, but one of those, so my Sydney Opera House never got approved for the same reason. The Space Needle didn't get approved for the same reason. So you have to remember. Um, is it the architectural design firm that owns the copyright or is it the client? It could be either one. Uh, for example, in Vegas, uh, in the Mandalay Bay, there's a observation deck in, in the foundation room, at the, like up on one of the high floors. You go up there with a big camera, they won't let you up because they'll tell you that the view is copyrighted. Meaning, the view from whatever from the left right, left side to the right side of that observation deck, they've copyrighted. So you can't even go up to shoot Vegas from that view because they own the copyright to it. Weird, but anyway, um, so. You'll, this is why I do it. Now, why do I create a, why and how do I create these virtual copies? Let's go back to 2015 and I'll explain it. All right, 2015, let's scroll down to that shoot I did for stock. All right, some of these I did not submit, which I was actually surprised by. I thought I had submitted all the ones I wanted to, but there were ones I hadn't submitted yet. And now I'm not seeing the one I want to submit right now. Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's say we want to submit this one. The laptop is um, out of view. The bottom of the iPad could be an issue because that's a lightning port, and I know it's a lightning port, and anyone that owns an iOS device knows that's a lightning port, so that, that probably needs to be cloned out. But... Everything else about this should be okay. A person interacting with a tablet. So let's fix the potential problem first, and then we'll um, we'll uh, we'll submit it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command E, and we'll edit. Um, don't want to edit a copy. Well, no, we'll edit the original because I can always put it on a different layer.
the view. I also have the view from the Eiffel Tower. Is that copyrighted? I have no idea if, the, if they've copyrighted that view or not. I would say that one's probably harder to copyright because it kind of goes all the way around the city. All right, so we want to take off this lightning port. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. Because that is a copyrighted port that we will then know it's an Apple device. Let's see if we can... Here, I'll just do it this way. Let's see if we can quickly and easily get rid of this. And you might even want to get rid of the speaker grill. All right. So that's gone. I don't think you can copyright speakers. And since it doesn't have a lightning port now, you don't know what it is. All right. So let's go ahead and save that. Maybe take off some of the holes or the ones in the middle. <laughs> so then, then we know. Oh, well, here, let's go ahead and do it. Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to keep grabbing the stuff around it. I don't know if this is worth the effort. Well, let's see. All right, we removed some of the holes. And no Apple device is like missing some, some of the speaker grill holes in the middle. So therefore, we have made this a non-recognizable. You don't know what that is. It's got these, you know, quad speakers on it. And we made a new device. All right, so we'll save it one more time. That's what it is. Oh, okay, yes. On the Eiffel Tower, you're absolutely right. The Eiffel Tower lights up at night with a light show and patterns. That's copyrighted. That's what it is. So, yes, you're right. The <laughs> clone the headphone jack back into the iPhone 7. Go on. Um, but, yes, that, that would violate the copyright. So, if you submit it like a video of the Eiffel Tower lit up or even a still shot with that light pattern on it, then it would be rejected because someone designed that light pattern and they hold a copyright to it. So that's why I didn't recognize the Eiffel Tower as being uh, copyrighted. But yes, the light show is. Okay, so now I have uh, edited that photo back in Lightroom. It does not have a lightning port, no Apple logo. You don't know that that's a MacBook Pro. Nothing else is recognizable in here um, as a intellectual property issue. Now, I'm going to make a virtual copy, and here's why. So let's go in. Let's... Um, Go to, I want to go to photo, create virtual copy. I always do it from the keyboard, so I have to think about it from the menu for a second. Now, a virtual copy is nothing more than a Lightroom copy of your photo. So it means that you didn't really duplicate that on the hard drive. There really isn't two photos, but in Lightroom, there, there is a second photo. Um, so you can do anything you want to that second photo without affecting the original. That's why I make virtual copies. So I don't screw up my originals that might be in a portfolio or some other collection. And then we'll go ahead and drag that in. Now when we come back over here, oh, I didn't put it at the top. Normally it should put it at the top as something that needs to be submitted. But okay, we'll leave it here. And so I can do things like, for example, take off the green flag. Green flags are relevant. I'll explain why those have a yellow flag in a minute. I can go ahead and rename this. The title is, the, is something that will get uploaded to Adobe Stock. So I'm going to go ahead and title it. You know what? Let me do one thing. I've had this, this slight bug in published collections now for, I don't know how long. But normally when you drag something or put something in a published collection, it puts it at the top as unpublished. Sometimes... Unless I quit and come back in, it does not do that. So let me quit Lightroom, come back in, and let me show you what I mean. Because then it'll make more sense. You'll see the things that have been published versus the things that haven't been published. Okay, so now at the top, there we go. That's the, that's the view you should have. So new to be published versus things that have already been published. Uh, and that's the way it would normally look. Okay, so what I can do here is I've got this one now and I can say, okay, instead of it being called Lindsay, that's her name, but we don't care about that for stock. No one cares about her name. No one's going to be looking for her name. What we want to say is businesswoman with tablet, not iPad, nothing, nothing that says that's a brand. 
And of course, it was taken in Atlanta. That keyword has nothing to do with this photo. So let's get rid of that keyword. Um, if it had anything else in caption, I would take that out. So I get to mess with my virtual copy any way I want. And my original still says Lindsay. My original still has Atlanta in it. My original um, is, is as is. The virtual copy lets me crop it, um, adjust it, do anything I want to do, develop it further any way that I want to do it without messing up the original. Even though it's going to submit a high-res version of this virtual copy to Adobe Stock. All right, so now, keywords. This is where most people fail when they start with Adobe Stock, including me. I failed at this miserably when I started with Adobe Stock or stock in general, because again, we think of keywords in the terms of what we see. So I'm going to, while here, I'm going to bring it up full screen. Oh, hang on. No, oops. Sorry. 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 I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Hit the wrong. I forgot I was in that field. Okay. So let's jump out of that field and let's go uh, loop view on this. So I want you guys to yell out some keywords that you would use to identify this image or not identify it, but put it up on stock. I'm going to give you some of the obvious ones that people do. For example, they would say, and you don't have to capitalize them, um, woman, um, brunette, Caucasian. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, blue, blouse, tablet, laptop, table, sitting, chair. Yep. Uh, I don't know if it's a dress or not, but yeah, we can put dress in there. Uh, office, working. That's a good one. Um, I was going to put dress in. What else? What else you got? Technology. I like that one. Okay. Self-employed. Working on the go. Uh, all right. Self-employed. Planning. I like that one. Scheduling. Okay. Some of you guys are getting it. Based on either you had experience doing this or you have heard me before. Entrepreneur. All right. And I spelled entrepreneur wrong. Don't spell your keywords wrong. Okay. I'm going to stop you there. This is good. The people that... Um, I can't renew... Yes, you need authorization from the person that that can be recognized, whether they can recognize themselves or not. I can, we can recognize her, she can recognize her. So you would need a model release. Uh, but anyway, back to the keywords, self-training. Yeah, these are all great. We would tend to do the ones I did up front. Woman, brunette, blue dress, office, chair, sitting, because we're looking at an image and saying, that's what we see. Tablet, laptop, table, you know, whatever. But the people that started coming up with things like Technology, self-employed, planning, scheduling, entrepreneur, touchscreen, things like that that I'm seeing. ITL, I don't know what ITL is. Researching, those are the things that people would be looking for to buy or license an image. There, you know what? I, I never go to the stock and say blue, blue blouse because <laughs> that's irrelevant. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm, I, and really, I'm not really looking for a brunette specifically. I mean, there may be people that are, but I, I, I would be more looking for some of the other things you talked about. Office setting, um, interacting with technology, uh, laptop, tablet, touchscreen, pointing. Those would be the things I'd be looking for for an image that I want to, to license. So if you concentrate your keywords just describing what you see and not thinking about what people are looking for, you won't be successful with stock. You won't be as successful, I should say, because your images just won't get seen. Um, yeah, you could do luxurious, 
uh, swag, sexy, if, if you think it's sexy, uh, holding. Those are the kinds of things that people might be searching for. They might, they probably won't be searching for long hair, um, profile view. They're not looking for those things. Um, so, how can you get some help with this? I'm going to leave these in here for now, but I may not end up with any of those. Well, there's a site as, as we like to, oh, hang on, I think I'm typing the keyword again, sorry. There's a site for this. And it's a site, it's my secret weapon, it's a site I've been using for, um, for many, many months now to find good keywords. So let me go back, let me open up a new browser tab, and let's go to uh, travel, not travel, photography, and let's scroll all the way down to the microstock keyword tool. This wonderful tool that I will put in the chat. There we go. So at least on Twitch, you guys have it. This wonderful microstock keyword tool is put out by the microstock group. So it's microstock, for those of you watching it later on something else, microstockgroup.com slash tools slash keyword.php. Um, I go to this every day <laughs> when I'm submitting stuff for stock. And what it lets me do is search for images that I that are going to be like the one I'm about to submit or like the ones I'm about to submit. So, for example, I would say, yes, only show me the ones with models because it doesn't make sense to show me ones that don't have models in them. I'm uploading a photo. Show me the maximum of 100. So that way I can have a lot to choose from. Then I put in some keywords of what it is I'm about to um, upload. So, um, woman with tablet and laptop that might that will probably start bringing up some images like what i'm about to submit let's see what happens and sure enough it did uh now the, don't expect to find an exact match if you find an exact match you've got a different problem all right but let's find uh something that's close like for example oh there she is she's got a blue she's a brunette she's holding a tablet uh, that one, we don't see a face. So I'm going to skip that one for now. Here's another one up here. So just click on the ones that are close to what you're about to do. I'm just glancing around. Um, let's see. Do we see anybody in an office? Dun, 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 dun. That's a good one. Even though it may not be what I'm about to do, but that's a good one. Oh, actually, that's a better one. Let me unselect that one. So you can click as many as you want. Um, you don't have to hold down shift or anything. Just keep clicking. Even though she's standing, that's fine. And that one's good. That's a group of people. Because what you're about to do is once you've found all the ones you think are close to what you're about to do, even though they're not exactly identical, they're not going to be, they're not going to be. Um, but once you find them all, then submit. I have never searched for Homo sapiens, Jane. <laughs> so that's probably not going to happen. All right. And see what it did. It brought up all the keywords in those images you just clicked on. So all the keywords came up. Forget about the images right now. Now, you're, now you have a list of keywords to play with, to choose from. So laptop. We didn't never, nobody said computer. Maybe they're, they, they won't say laptop. Maybe they'll search for the word computer, and we would, have, we would have missed it. No one said computer. At least I didn't see you if you did. Uh, beautiful person, sure, young. Internet. No one said internet. Technology, female, Caucasian, adult, modern, casual. Oh, actually, she, yeah, she's casual. Uh, lifestyle, sitting, communication. No one said communication. We did say woman. We didn't say digital. Someone did say wireless, I believe. Uh, electronic. Now, how many keywords? So far, we've got 20. Adobe Stock on the new site requires a minimum of five. Okay, you did say computer. I missed it. Um... A minimum of five. If you only submit five, you will be a lot less successful. Because imagine if you only had to pick five of these. You're probably going to get missed a lot because you didn't pick enough. How many can you pick? You can pick up to 50. 
How many should you pick? Somewhere around 30, 35. I would say 30 at a minimum. Anywhere between 30 and 50 and you're good. Do you need 50? Nope. Because chances are, if, you, if you're putting in 50 keywords, you're probably um, risking over keywording or even keyword spamming. Meaning, what I mean by over keywording is you're starting to pick stuff that really isn't about that image. And keyword spamming is picking stuff that's definitely not, not about that image just to get it chosen or have it show up in searches. And you could be banned for keyword spamming. So... Don't start picking a bunch of stuff that's just because you want your image found if it has nothing to do with your image. All right, business. Um, happy. That's a good one. Holding. Uh, let's see. So, so far we're at 24. We're not there yet. Professional. Interior. Touchscreen. I like those. Um, device. Smiling. I think she was smiling. Studying, connected, smart, millennial. That's a good one. Uh, yes, even a paperclip or hammer is technology. Good morning. I am good. How are you? Um, leisure. Oh, she's not Hispanic. She doesn't look Hispanic, so I'm not going to pick that one. Connection, cellular, conference. Desk is fine. Entrepreneur, someone said that earlier. That's a good one. She's not wearing glasses. So see, that would be an, an example of keyword spamming. Picking eyeglasses because maybe someone will search for eyeglasses and the subject's not wearing eyeglasses. So your image has nothing to do with eyeglasses. That's keyword spamming. Um, university, network, because it could be a university. Um, research, someone said that, I believe. Wi-Fi, I think someone said that, or internet at least. Um, and some of these are just a little too generic. Lounge, okay, so we're already at 44, and sometimes I've gone over 50 without looking, and I'm like, oh no, I gotta take some away. Which ones do I not want? All right, so mobile, I would definitely want, and the ones that are bigger, are the ones that were used the most in those images. So they're they're listed in a ranking kind of order. I will use brunette um, and I will use student. Okay, so I got 47. All right, so once you click into this box, you'll get the ability to select all and copy. If you wanna add a keyword that wasn't on the list, you can add it and it will always put it at the top. So now I've got them copy. Switch back over to Lightroom and Again, I can put them in here. We'll just replace ours. So I'm going to go ahead and I could put them in with them, but I'm going to replace since we went and got a better set. Now, the one downside to doing your keywording here is that the minute I clicked out of it, Lightroom alphabetized the keywords because Lightroom has always done that since day one. I would beg the question, why does it need to alphabetize and when does that ever matter? But by alphabetizing, it kind of screwed us up because... Not only is five your minimum, but your first five count the most. So if you were doing them in order, now your order just got screwed up because it just put them in alphabetical order. And chances are you'd want tablet and woman and uh, something else before adult and beautiful and brunette. So you, uh, put them in alphabetical order does not help you at all. Um, as a matter of fact, when you go to publish this and you get back to the site, it will say, hey, we detected these are in alphabetical order and you should probably reorder some of them the way you want. All right, but anyway, alphabetical or not, they're there. And now this image is ready to go. And how is it ready to go? It meets the minimum requirement for size. It's a 36 megapixel file, so no problem there. It's got a title in it, businesswoman with tablet. It's got uh, keywords in it, at least five keywords. So that means I'm ready to now send this over to uh, Adobe Stock. Are there more keyword tools like EJ? When I use keyword, choose keyword ABC, how's the probability that someone buys that? Or how much chooses photos? Some kind of forecast. There's no forecast tool that I'm aware of, um, but that MicroStock site is a good indication because again, once you pick all the images, the most popular, most used keywords are at the top. So that's kind of like your indicator of which ones were the most successful. Or simply go to Adobe Stock, search for an image like yours, and you can even click on it and see which keywords were used. So you can get an idea there. 
Um, sort, paste the keywords alphabetically, checkbox or something. Yeah, we just basically need them to not sort the keywords alphabetically because I don't know who that helps. Uh, if I put in keywords in Lightroom, chances are I'm putting them in so that I can search for that image later in Lightroom. What difference does it make if the keywords are in alphabetical order? So I would just say don't put them in alphabetical order anymore, or at least make it a preference. Uh, that would be my wish for the Lightroom team. Okay, so let's hit publish. I can talk while it's uploading. So right now what it's doing in the background is it's making a JPEG of this PSD or RAW file or TIFF or whatever this is and uploading that directly to my account on Adobe Stock. Um, that's why you set this up once with your login, you're logged into Adobe Stock or it'll take you to Adobe Stock to create your account or login. Once that connection's been established, you can publish from here on out and it will automatically upload anything you put in here to Adobe Stock. Uh, I was gonna say, it shouldn't take too much longer. I know my connection's kind of slow, but let's see what happens. There we go, okay, it's done. All right, so now once it's done, it says one image uh, successfully uploaded. It now has moved that image down into, I'm sorting this by date, so it moved it down to the 2015 photos. And now I can continue to Adobe Stock. When I, can conti when I continue to Adobe Stock, um, it takes me to the Uploaded Files tab for any new images. And it, all, it will always say incomplete because until you go finish it, it is incomplete. How do, what do I mean by finish it? It's a photo versus an illustration. So that's right. It has a title. It pulled this title over from Lightroom. It has at least five keywords, a maximum of 50. And it even, even though they were alphabetical, it kind of auto, this is the auto detection feature where it kind of guessed which keywords might be better in order. I still disagree. We'll fix that in a minute. Um, next, category. So this, no matter what, you, don't, you won't have a category in. We should have the ability in Lightroom at least uh, to put a category in. That should be a field for that um, plugin, but we'll work on that later. All right, so anyway, what is this? Is it people? Is it lifestyle? Is it technology? It's a tough call. Is it business? I would say it's business. So I'm going to put it in business, but you only get to pick one category, so make it good. Make it count. Um, did you discuss model release on street shots or sport events? And if yes, uh, I will see it on the video later. Yes, I did discuss model releases, and we're about to do that right now. Uh, so model releases, once again, required for anything where the person or people are recognizable. If you were in a sports arena and you shot the back of everyone's head and no one turned around and you're only looking at the backs of people's heads, they're not recognizable. That's fine. If you shot them with shallow depth of field and no one can, you can't really make out a face, that's fine. But if you see faces, you need model releases for every face you see. All right, so um, does this file uh, show recognizable people and or property? Yes, it does. It does. We know that's a face. We know who that is. Uh, so in that case, you would either search for an existing model release that you've already uploaded from a previous shoot or create a new one, meaning uh, when they say create it means upload a new one. Uh, based on one that you just had signed. So I, I do have a model release for this person. Uh, let me just search for it here. Lindsay. There's Lindsay. All right, so now I've got that model release uh, tied to that particular entry. And now let's deal with the keywords. So the keywords, uh, we have 42 remaining keywords. So let's expand them and see them all. And now... Um, if you only got, if, if your five, first five are the most important out of all of these, which five would you put at the top? So chime in, chat. Which would be your top five keywords for this image? And put them in the order that you would prefer them in. So for me, I would say it would be, definitely got to get tablet in there. Tablet. The laptop's really not the main thing, but it certainly is a keyword, but just not one of the main things. I would say woman would be number one. Tablet would be number two. Um, business would be number three. Did I move that one up? Business. Business. Business would be number three. 
what would I be as what would I have as number? Now, all I'm doing is resorting. It doesn't mean that Wi-Fi and Caucasian and connection aren't important. They're just not the top five. So what are your top five keywords? Um, list the most important keywords first. So I would say, let's see how many are, we got three so far. Uh, dun, 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 maybe entrepreneur. Now you can send one all the way to the top, which I just did, and then pull it down. So I need one more woman, tablet, business, entrepreneur. I'm going to say, I could do computer, I could do conference. Mm, so many keywords, so few choices. I'm going to do mobile. So I think a lot of people are searching for mobile. So this, is, again, again, this is what you're basing it on. What, are people, what do you think people are most likely to search for? All right, that would be my pick off the top of my head for my first, my top five. So I'm going to go ahead and save the work. Once you save it, if everything's set, it'll change from blue incomplete to green ready to go. You've got 47 keywords. You've got one model release assigned to this. Um, so far, I haven't seen anyone chime into the chat yet. I know there's a delay. We'll wait a second for you guys to chime in and see if... See if your five are better than my five. <laughs> See if I want to switch anything around. But um, while I'm waiting for those to chime in at this point, then you would just hit submit for approval. And it would go into the, it would move from the new to the in review tab. Now your review, you're exciting to see how the pricing works. We already did that early on. <laughs> but uh, in review means that it could take anywhere from on average, one to seven days to have your images, your content reviewed. And it's all over the map. I've had things reviewed literally the next day. I've had things reviewed literally seven days later and everything in between. I've had some things reviewed sooner than others, meaning I submitted something three days ago that still hasn't been reviewed, but something I submitted yesterday got reviewed. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just a team of reviewers. Whoever gets to your content first reviews it. Professional, I like, well, you're not giving me five, John. I want your five in order. What are your five uh, keywords? Are you saying we don't have professional? If we don't have professional, we should probably add it. No, we have professional, but would that be one of the top five? Well, let's make that one. Maybe it's not one of the top five, but it certainly should be up there. Let's not make it number one, but let's pull it down to be maybe number six. Because again, this is still in order even past the five. Um, so if you really want to be particular, you can start putting them in, in an order that you think is even beyond uh, important for the five. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and submit because we're almost, uh, we got like 20, 36 minutes left. So I'm going to go ahead and submit because we've got more work to do. So I'll save it one more time since I made a change. And now we'll submit for approval. Okay, uh, sure, you know, one last thing. So entrepreneur, work at home, remote work, freelancer, data processor, data processor. I, I, I would disagree with that last one. I don't think anyone searches for that anymore. But um, I like all your, your top four though. Can hyphenated words work? Yes, they can. I don't know that it would matter. Meaning, rather, Winter 07, unless I was short on space, meaning I like I'd already used 49 and I still need to put in one more, I would put working and woman separately. Because if someone searches for working woman, yours is still going to come up. Um, but they may not search for working dash woman. So I don't know if that's going to screw it up versus help it. Um, Freelancer, entrepreneur. I'm, Eunice, you've got me intrigued. I don't. I think I used entrepreneur, but your freelancer and your remote. Hang on, let me close this for a second. Did I even put remote in? Definitely want to add remote. So even after the fact, you can add a keyword here. Like I missed remote, and did I put in freelancer? Freelancer is another good one. I did not. So let's put in freelancer too. All right. Again, I don't know that they would be in my top five, but they definitely need to be in there. Uh, okay. So 
uh, without further ado, you guys can decide on your own for your own files what which will be your top five. But let's go ahead and submit this one. And submit. So the search is not smart search that would be looking for working. Yeah, so again, if you put in, if someone searched for working woman, working and they put it in working space woman, your image would come up if working and woman were two separate words. Um, so these are ones that are still waiting to be approved in my queue. And some of these have been, even some of the, uh, some of the ones that I've submitted that were in the same groups have been approved and some haven't. So that's what I mean by it's random for the approval. All right. Um, so as far as the search is concerned, try it out. Try one uh, on the Adobe Stock site and see what you find if you do use hyphenated words. I just don't know that that would help you. I don't know that it would hurt you, but I don't know that it would help you by using hyphenated versus just putting them in a separate words. Because if you put them in a separate words, you get more use out of them. So if I put in working and woman as two separate words, then someone could search for just working. Someone could search for working woman. Someone could search for... Um, technology working and my image would come up with all of those searches but if you limit it to a hyphenated keyword then it may not find it I'm not saying it doesn't but I'm saying it may not so I would say use hyphens as like a last resort meaning you're just out of space and you want to put in two keywords and you only have one left okay so that would be the digital yeah digital we did use digital um, that was definitely one of the keywords. So that was the process from start to finish. We found an image we wanted to submit. We just did one. We uh, put it into the published collection. So now it's it's there. If I scroll all the way back down to 2015, uh, there it is. It's been submitted. Uh, if it gets approved, great. If it doesn't get approved or gets declined, then I'll come back and mark it with one star. So I know which ones have been declined. Um, winner 07, I continue to say, I don't think that will help you. If you want to do it, there's nothing stopping you. So that's my opinion on it. Uh, but by all means, if you want your top five to be hyphenated, go for it. All right. Uh, yes, electronics, I think we did, but if not, that would, that would have been one as well. Let's see. Did we not? We did electronic, not electronics. So if they typed it with an S, it wouldn't be found. If they typed it without an S, then it would. Um, okay. So let's talk. We got like 30 minutes left. Let's talk about uh, a different kind of workflow. Let's talk about video. Because video, you stand to make a lot more money. I know people that started out doing stock with just photography and they stopped doing photography or at least stopped focusing on it to focus on video instead. Here's why. Videos on Adobe stock, like images, again, we're not talking about subscriptions or anything. An image on Adobe stock is $9.99. That is the flat rate. A video on Adobe stock, I believe, starts at $79. So 33% of $10 versus 33% of $80, which would you rather have? So in other words, if you are good at video, you stand to make even more. Oh, and by the way, with video, it's not 33%, it's 35%. So it'd be 33% of $10 or 35% of $80. Um, so that's why a lot of people are just like really focused on video. And another thing is with video, there's a, there's a plus and a minus. There's less video on Adobe stock right now. So therefore less competition for your video to be found. But right now there are less people buying video. <laughs> so it's like, you know, supply and demand. If it, Let's say, I think last time I looked, which was a long time ago, so it's a lot more now. There were only 2 million videos on Adobe stock. That was a long time ago. So that's a far cry from the, you know, 40 or what would it be, 58 million of everything else. So let's say there were only 2 million videos. 
then video is, in other words, if you get your video on there, you're going to be, you're going to be able to be seen more times for people looking for videos and hopefully your video will sell. And when it does sell, it'll be a bigger payoff, but there are less people buying video right now than there are images. So it just depends on how you look at it. Um, uh, well, Isiv, uh, 1978, thank you and you're welcome. Uh, good morning, uh, Gavison. And I think I missed one earlier. No, this is, not, well, Adobe Stock is not my full-time job. Working for Adobe is. Thor on 1205. Okay, so now the video workflow is going to be slightly different from an upload standpoint. You still need keywords. And you know what? This would be a good time to go over the requirements. Let's go to the requirement page, which I had done. Here we go. All right, so here are the technical requirements for your content. For, so for images, what we just did, JPEGs only, not pings, not GIFs, not animated GIFs, none of that, just JPEGs, not PSDs, not TIFFs, not RAW files. So that's another reason why it's great to be able to submit them through here because you're not having to export out anything. You're not having to change your format. These are all PSDs and RAW files, but by submitting them through Adobe Stock, it makes a JPEG on the fly that it uploads. I don't have to think about it. I don't think about it as a, at the right size or right resolution or anything, long as my original is high enough quality. So JPEG format only, minimum four megapixel, maximum, so there is a maximum, 100 megapixel, and maximum file size. And I think the same thing, if you had over a 100 megapixel image in Lightroom, it would also downsample it to be at least, you know, to be 100 megapixels to upload it properly. Maximum file size, 45 megabytes, and that would be a huge JPEG. All right, vectors can either be an Illustrator or EPS format, and they have to be uploaded a special way. Um, in a zip file, believe it or not, because they have to contain two files, the EPS or AI file, so the vector, and a JPEG preview. That's what shows up on the website. So you have to make a JPEG preview of your illustration and put those two together, zip them, and upload it that way. Um, can I explain why what? Oh, for video, uh, should you upload it at different resolutions or just max? Uh, you can do for video, uh, which we're coming to right now, upload it at the max because it'll the site will take care of making different sizes for you. Uh, can I ex explain why? I don't know who you're referring to. Uh, we're at limits. I would have thought they were the highest quality possible. Then again, 45 JPEGs. Are, yeah, so there you go. All right, so videos. Videos must be uploaded through FTP because they're so big. Uh, minimum video resolution is 720p, so 1280 by 720, but we recommend 1080 and higher. Uh, they can be in different file formats, .mov, .mp4, .mpeg, .avi. Duration, this is the part that kills me with video. This is what makes video so much easier. It can be as short as five seconds, and it can't be any longer than a minute. So if you've got some killer video drone footage, but let's say the drone's flying over something really cool for 15 seconds, but then it you know, it fly, you turn it the wrong way or whatever, and it's bad. All you need is that 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds of good footage. That's it. Um, maximum si file size, 4 gigs, uh, basically 3.9. Avoid any vertical or square framing. In other words, don't upload your vertical cell phone videos because no one will want to buy them. I shouldn't say no one. Most people won't. And uh, don't upload them as square. All right, so video format, um, MP, I'm going to do MP4, and 5 to 60 seconds. I think it used to be shorter than that, so they extended it out to now 60 seconds, but that's great. Um, yep, if you got some short time-lapse clips that might work. So I have some videos on stock. Uh, let's see, I'll go back to my former collection. I was keeping a collection before we had this new tool. I think my videos are in it. Let me show you what I've submitted so far. And let's go to attribute and let's do video. 
No, I didn't put them in here. Okay, I thought I had, but uh, I have some videos on stock already. Um, and they're were, they were all drone videos, so they're all drone footage. So let me, let me go in. As a matter of fact, they might be... Oh, they're definitely in there. Okay, so for example, no, I shouldn't say they're all drone footage. Some of it's actually from this shoot. Uh, so let me go back to my 2015. Let's see if I go here and say show it to me in the collection. It is not there. Okay, of course, because that's a smart preview. Here we go. Uh, here we go. So for example, yeah, okay, I did some 36 second ones, uh, 31 second ones, 34 second ones. So this is basically what I was doing. Let me show you uh, what this looks like as a video. Now, I, I had them interact with each other without saying a word because no one wants the audio. <laughs> They're gonna use this on a website. They're gonna use this wherever they don't really care what anyone's saying. So I purposely told both actors in this case not to talk. Pretend. Pretend you're showing him something on the computer. Don't, you know, don't talk. Don't say anything because it won't matter. I'm going to take the audio out anyway and then you'll just be moving your lips for no reason. Uh, so same thing in reverse. Now he's showing her something. And they're just pointing. No one's saying a word. So this is an example of I'm already set up to do a shoot. I've already got the lights, camera, models, in place, clothing, set, the setting, whole nine yards. Flip the button on the DSLR and shoot a few seconds of video. Why not? Because you're already there. You're already, yeah, the iPad's in the video, but... You know, some of those were able to get approved. Some of them weren't. So it just depended on who the moderator was also at the time, whether they thought it was a problem or not. So again, going forward, I would know, don't put the iPad on the table. Don't have a logo showing. Don't have something recognizable showing. Uh, but yes, the iPad in this case would be bad because it is showing. So let me show you one where I know I have some where the iPad wasn't there. Like this one. Okay, so here's one, no iPad in place, in, in sight. Uh, yeah, but, you know, again, it gets picky with that home button because that home button is, is the Achilles heel for the intellectual property claim on that video. Uh, but in this case, can't tell that that's necessarily a MacBook Pro, no logo. It could be any tablet, or I'm sorry, any computer, and no sound, no audio. You know, to, as a matter of fact, I purposely edited the audio out because the audio is irrelevant when you're submitting for stock. Uh, unless it's stock audio, obviously. So these are examples of videos that I shot specifically for stock with stock in mind. High def, 1080p, off my DSLR. Um, and yes, you can sell. I think there was a question. Can you sell to other site, other houses? Yes. You don't have to be exclusive with Adobe Stock. Um, no, do not change folders outside of Lightroom unless you want to cause yourself problems. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, you can submit to other stocks on your own sales. Oh, absolutely. You can still use them for your own personal work. You can still sell them to other places as long as you don't click the exclusivity box. Um, so it's your member at the end of the day. Even though you're licensing Adobe to resell this content, it is still your content. At any given time, by the way, too, you can go back to the site and say, delete. I don't want this to be sold anymore. Or maybe some client comes to you and says, you, oh my God, that photo of the two playing shuffleboard, I must have that as my own. No one else should have that anymore. And you go to Adobe Stock and delete it and sell it to that one person. Exclusive rights. So you can do that as well. Uh, is Apple copyright really that excessive? Uh, you can't include their products anywhere in the videos. You can't include their products anywhere in the videos if they're recognizable. Yes, it is that exclusive. They're that picky. So in other words, all I'm trying to do is protect you and your time. If you put in uh, someone holding an iPhone in, in a video or still 
and I and the, the moderator of this of your content says I see that that's an iPhone and, and denies it, then you've wasted your time shooting that. Versus, it's not if it's just not worth the risk if they can hold a generic phone or don't show the phone at all or whatever. Is it that important to the shot? So yes, it, Apple's that picky about their content being sold and rebranded without their permission in a certain way. Uh, it's their branding. They need to protect it. Yes. Okay. So that was the videos that uh, I had submitted from that shoot. And I plan to do a lot more of this. In other words, if you're taking the time to do a photo shoot, might as well press the video button on your camera too. Because uh, you only need a few seconds of it. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds here and there. All right. So let's go to... Um, I'm going to show you how I process a video to submit from Iceland. Let's go attribute. Let's go video. Okay. So, oh, did I do video? I did not do video. Let's get rid of the one star. These are all videos. Okay. All right. So uh, some of these are already short enough. Some of these are too long. Um, but in any case, and some of these are, uh, you know, are vertical, some of these are, you know, not really for stock. Uh, but let's say I want to pick one of these and get it ready for stock. So I would say definitely one of the ones flying over the icebergs here. And uh, let's say out of that 53 seconds, let's pick this one. Out of this 53 seconds, I want some of this to be able to submit for stock. So I know I can do as short as five as much as 60, which is cool. That's a lot. Um, so in this case, what I want to do is I only need the part of it that I need. So I can do that edit right in Lightroom. Now, of course, you can use Premiere Pro. You can use any other editing tool. You use whatever you want. Um, but since the video came from my camera and it's already here in Lightroom, why not? Why not just use Lightroom to do it? So in this case, um, let me cue this up. Beetlejuice is up next. Uh, in this case, what I want to do now is I want to edit or trim this. So we'll go to the trimming feature here in Lightroom, which is this little gear. And I can now um, scrub through this and I can say, okay, that's a good flyover. But see here, right here where, it start, where I start to turn the drone, that would not be good. So I would say from here, let me see where I turn it. And I just fly backwards and I fly over there and then I fly and land it. Okay, I would say that really that first maybe 15 seconds is probably the best. Or at least one of the best. Maybe I have two clips in here. But let's say from here to where I stop to maybe right there. That's it. Now I would just simply pull this over and say that this is the only part of this video I care about. This is the 13 seconds I want to submit to Adobe Stock. Just that. Because 13 seconds out of a 30 second ad, no one's going to even use all 13 seconds of this. They're going to use bits and pieces. So 13 seconds doesn't sound like a lot. It is. It's a lot. Um, all, nat all nature footage is copyrighted. <laughs> okay, yes, all nature footage is copyrighted. No, in this case, it is not. Now, honestly, there's one more thing I would probably want to do to this video, and I don't know if this will work or not. I I've heard rumor that this might work. Um, see how it's kind of bent? The horizon is curved. Well, that's because this was shot with a DJI Phantom, and the Phantom has a natural fisheye look to it. Now, in Premiere Pro, there's, it's a one click to correct it. In the stills from the Phantom, it's a one click to correct it. I've heard now the only problem though is 
In video editing, you can't take a video in Lightroom into the develop module. See, video is not supported. I can't do it here. But if I remember, there's a, there's a trick, there's a workaround. Well, by the way, you can do quick develop. You can quick develop the crap out of it. So you can say, hey, I want to adjust the uh, temperature of it, uh, which I don't. But if you want to adjust the temperature of it, you could. You can adjust the exposure. There's my exposure. So I can make it brighter. Um, that's cool to be able to do all of that in your video non-destructively. But um, let me, let me I'm gonna mark this with a pick flag for now. I'm going to come back out and say, don't just show me videos, but show me, I think I should have a still from this camera. No, don't show me that. Let me see if I have a still from this camera. Uh, yeah, I do. Phantom. There we go. So here's some stills from this camera. Now, if I were to take one of the stills and I were to go to the develop module, and I were to go to the uh, lens correction, I can enable the profile to fix it. Okay. If I now go back and copy this, and I'm just going to copy, I'm copying the settings. I copy check none and I copy just the lens correction copy. The trick is, if I do this correctly, we'll see in a second here, I want to have that image selected and uh, dun, 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 dun. let's turn it off for now. I want to have that image here. We'll mark that with a pick as well. And my video. So here, let's just do this. Show me the pics. That one. And where's my video? Oh, it's going to take too long to find it this way. So let's do, let's do this. I want these two together. I want the flag to be a pick. Flagged. And all cameras and video. All right, there we go. So I want that one. I have to do it a different way. So I can get them both at the same time. Let's just mark it with, uh, I don't know. Let's just do red. All right, mark everything. Mark the things I want red. All right, here, turn it off. Attribute. Attribute. No, 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 no. I keep picking the wrong one. Sorry, guys. Bad on my part. All right, that one, and we'll mark that one red as well. Okay, so now I can turn that off and just show me the reds. That'll, I just, I'm trying to get them both selected at the same time with nothing else. Uh, okay, so I got them both selected. And now, um, if I go over to the develop module, even though the video is selected, it's selected with a still. So the still is what came over to the um, develop module. So now if I hit paste, for both of those, let's see if it actually does it. Someone's, someone once told me that pasting would actually do it to both images or both things, even though the video technically can't be corrected this way. And I don't see that it did it, but maybe it did. Hang on. All right. Um, let me turn that off for a second. I'll turn it back on. All right. I don't see anything happening to the video, so someone lied to me, unless I'm not doing it right. Let's see if it did it. It didn't do it. So I'd go into Premiere and do it. All right, but anyway, um, if unless I'm doing that trick wrong, that trick is kind of like one of those secret hidden things to, to correct a video, even though you're not supposed to be able to correct a video that way. All right, anyway, so I got the video, the 13 seconds I want, and now I need to get it out of Premiere, I'm sorry, out of uh, Lightroom, just those 13 seconds. So let's go to Export. And I have one already set up for Adobe Stock Video. So let me show you what it does. It puts it in a folder called Adobe Stock Video. It doesn't do it. I don't care about the naming. 
Um, it will include video files. It will give me the max quality, H.264, full 1080p, uh, maximum quality. Don't do anything else. And I don't really, yeah, I don't really care about that. You don't have to do anything in that. And then when you're done, show it to me. All right, so when it's done, it'll make a 13 second version of that. Cool, I'm glad you're gonna to submit to stock disband. So now it's making, it's re-rendering a video that's only 13 seconds long, just the part I told it, just the part I trimmed. And yes, Adobe does take 4K. All right, so we got this video ready to go now. There it is. And now, again, I can't upload it via the website. I'm going to see if the website does show you where your FTP is, though. Hang on, I don't remember if it does that or not. Because you can't upload it via the web. Let me see for video. There we go. FT videos must be FTP'd. But where do you get your... I know where my FTP information is. I'm trying to learn... Okay, here it is. Learn more. I'm trying to see... Oh, okay, so it gives... Oh, I don't want to show you that. <laughs> if you click the learn more, it will show you your FTP account information. So let me go get mine real quick. Hang on for a second here. All right. All right, so it's giving me my host, my ID, and my password. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and launch an FTP client, and then I'll switch back over once I get that all keyed in to uh, show you how this would work. So it's giving me my FTP account information. Copy. Paste. My user ID. Copy. Paste. And if somebody's going to upload files on my behalf, just make sure they're good. Because <laughs> otherwise, I'll just delete them. All right, so someone gets that uh, content. All right, so anyway, uh, now that I got that in there, I can cancel out of it because the password is not being shown anymore. And I can now show you what I'm doing. Okay, so we go back to my camera here. I'm using an FTP account uh, called, or FTP app called, um, transmit it's an FTP account or FT I keep saying account FTP app for um, for the Mac uh, you can use any FTP um, client you want uh, this one is one of my favorites I've been using it for years so now I've logged in with that information I got from the learn more so it gave me my information and now I can just go ahead and take that video file let's close that and drag it in so now it will upload it in whatever time it takes to upload the size file over your connection once it's uploaded it will show up in your stock contributor as a new file just like the, the still did that you'll need to go in and keyword and categorize and put a model release in if you need one or property release in if you need one so you'll still need to do all the same things even for a video. Uh, but once you submit it, then if it's approved, your video is available for sale. And like I said, videos have a minimum price, I believe, of $79. I could be wrong on that, but it's around that price. And 35% of that goes to you. All right. Uh, yep, Beetle Jace is up next. I don't know if this will, this will finish in the five minutes we have it looks like it will but uh any questions thus far while we're waiting for this upload to happen so your uh you can start uploading via ftp just click the learn more and your account information will be displayed right in front of you um and then you can use whatever ftp client you want by the way how do you get paid weekly direct deposits etc okay good question uh, you get paid right now. I believe your choices are PayPal or I think they can send you a check if you want. Um, I opted for PayPal, so I don't think twice about it. And it is monthly. And it is only when you reach the $50 minimum payout. 
So in other words, if you haven't reached $50, you won't be paid. If you reach $50, you're automatically paid once a month. Um, and of course, the $50, whatever you may, carries over to the next month, month until you hit 50. Taxes on images for tax return. Um, you will get a 1099 from Adobe if you reach a certain amount of sales or a certain, a certain amount of payout, I should say. And um, then you file your taxes the way you would file your taxes. Will Adobe take animation? Not at this point. So right now it is photos, vectors, illustrations, and videos. Now, if, you're, if you want to animate and make it a video file, I guess you could do that. Um, you will <laughs> monthly by Raven. Okay. Was that money might get disclaimer? Was that the money might get lost altogether? I don't know what that means. All right. Let me see how my FTP is doing. Okay. It's done. So that uploaded. Um, So let me go to, let's see, new, any new yet? All right, so I don't know if it needs to process it first before it shows up, but you will, once it shows up, you will key, click on it and keyword it and do all the things you would normally do. Um, but that's the way video and, and I believe vectors, I don't know, I think vectors you can upload via the website. So everything that's not a photo, you can upload either the website or FTP. Now you can upload photos via FTP as well. If you got a thousand photos, you want to just drag and drop and let them all upload at one time via FTP, you can do that. Um, you don't have to do it via the website. You don't have to do it via Lightroom or Bridge. But you have so many options to upload and so many ways to now take advantage and of your content and um, potentially make some money. Now, as we close this out, um, Who's this for? This is for people that are going to continue doing it like anything else. Um, you will not make your, your fortune in a day. You will not make your fortune in the first month. You might not make your fortune in the first six months or a year. But if you keep at it, you will only continue to make more um, if you're submitting good quality content and your keyword and you do all the right things. The more content you submit, the more content you potentially make. Do I make my living from Adobe Stock? Not even close. But do I make enough from Adobe Stock to pay a bill or two? Absolutely. So it's up to you. It's what you put into it. And I'm always, always still uploading to Adobe Stock. Um, I could, I, I just uploaded some today. <laughs> I'm going to upload some more, some more of those videos. I still haven't uploaded the rest of those drone videos. There's tons more I can upload. Uh, my goal was to get to, um, I've got about, oh, 500 something images up. My goal was to get a thousand uploaded by the end of the year. And I should hit that goal. Uh, how much did you submit and make the first month? Um, I don't know. Probably didn't make anything the first month. And I probably only submitted a few things like 10 or 20 because that's what you do when you're first trying something out and then you get discouraged and you stop. Although I knew better <laughs> than to stop. Uh, so if you look at it that way, if you say, oh, well, it's my first month and I only, I submitted a hundred things and I only made 10 cents or you'll make more than 10 cents, but I only made $2. I'm going to stop doing this. You're right. You're absolutely right. If you're going to stop doing it at that point, you should stop doing it at that point. Uh, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's not overnight. It is a long-term goal and it is something that you will continue to build. Um, the, the guys that are making what I consider decent money, in other words, money that, again, not enough to quit on, but enough to uh, really, you know, pay some bills with, they have thousands of pieces of content, thousands of images, two, three, four thousand images on Adobe Stock, and they're the ones that are doing well. All right, so with that said, my time's up. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. J